Hey, so welcome everybody. Welcome, we welcome. Are here on our episode number four. Wow, isn't that crazy? Episode four. That's Ep that is kind of crazy. It's crazy. That's uh, a whole month of podcasts. Now. It's a whole month of podcasts, yeah. and uh, yeah, so it's um, it's been great. I yeah. mean, I don't know. It's it's we haven't decided on the name yet. We're <laughs> still, still working on it. But for me, it's been a great experience. Yeah, me too. Because I don't know how many situations... I mean, because everything now nowadays is all texting, and I'm older, so I have a different perspective on it. <laughs> I just I feel like texting and FaceTime and just kind of this uh, electronic communication is is good on the one hand. Right. But I feel like these conversations don't happen often enough. Yeah, right. And just being in, in the context of a podcast, we mm -hmm. can just look at each other yeah. and just have a conversation one on one. Right. Is, is a great so the, the reason why I'm saying that is because if if that was just the only reason we did this was just for us to be able to have this moment and talk yeah it would be great I would feel super honored mm -hmm. but we are privileged to have actually people uh, watching and listening yeah. Thank and you so guys. we appreciate you guys feedback right we appreciate uh, you guys sharing this if this is helpful if anything that we talk about here is helpful um, just make a note of just sharing this content with anyone who may be benefited by listening to it yeah, yeah. so and if, uh, if you ever want to join the conversation, hit the comments, um, hit the subscribe button so that you know when we post podcasts or post our Sunday service. So you are always welcome to join the conversation. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> and so just in case you don't know who I am, my name's Josh. I'm the lead pastor here at Downey First Christian Church. I'm Francis. I'm the youth pastor here at Downey First. And um, it's an honor and it's a privilege. It's an absolute honor. Yeah, it's, it's awesome. awesome. It's a good time. So one of the things we talk about, one, uh, so one of the values, or I don't know if the values is the right word, but one of the things that is important to us is that what we talk about now is unscripted. So it's, <laughs> yeah. it's literally, literally, like we have no idea what we're going to talk about. Yeah. Um, I went home to lunch real <laughs> quick and I had some thoughts but we haven't really said, hey, this is what the topic is going to be about. Mm, it's just yeah. kind of a, a stream of consciousness, right. <laughs> and we'll see where that takes us. Yeah, um, maybe that's a name. Uh, actually, it sounds kind of it sounds kind of corny. Stream for... of consciousness? No, no, no. <laughs> that that's that's that sounds like that's a <laughs> psycho psychology podcast. Psychology podcast. I was thinking unscripted. <laughs> oh, unscripted. But it, it seems it seems a little forced. I, it, unscripted. I, I kind of like that. I, I mean, yeah. I like the idea behind There's, it. Yeah, maybe a different word. Yeah, like off the cuff know. or something mm -hmm. like that. Yeah. So I don't know. Keep sending in the requests. Yes. We. We are. We were thinking about lockdown, mm -hmm. but one of our faithful viewers, he's he made up a good point. That, Very good point. That if we call it the lockdown, we're kind of capitalizing too much on the coronavirus. Mm -hmm. and the coronavirus is not going to last forever. The vaccine's out. You know, yeah. we we know the protocol now. Yeah. We're, we, we, we can operate in life again. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. At least a lot of people can. So yeah. Sorry for the people who are still not in work and stuff like that. So yeah. sorry for that. Oh, but, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, we're praying for that. But yeah, I think maybe the lockdown, we might need to reconsider that name because we were, we were really excited for, yeah. the, for the lockdown. Yeah. So. It has a nice ring to it. Um, I think we could, I'm not, so we like the name. Uh, we're not sold on it yet. Mm -hmm. Um, if you have another name that you want to send out, just send it out. So we have, it can be either DFCC, pod, the, the names that we have so far, DFCC podcast, the lockdown podcast mm -hmm. and down knee podcast, which down knee, like yeah. down on your knees podcast. Right. Right. So those are some of the options. Um, I kind of like the lockdown still. I'm not sure why though. Yeah. I just think it has a nice ring to There's it. There's a ring to it for sure. Yeah. And even yes. if it's not, uh, in the sense of like restricted, cause I, I understand the idea of it mm -hmm. being restrictive to what it could be. It also, um, reminds us of how we started. That's oh, it always that's brings us back true. to how this whole thing started. That's very true. And, uh, so anyway, but we're not sold on anything yet. Yeah. We're still literally trying to figure out what this is. Right. Yeah. So what we do know so far is it's a conversation, uh, between two people who prepare content every week mm -hmm. for, um, audiences of different sizes. Yeah. Um, and we try to connect with people. And so at this stage, so it's uh, Tuesday today, and I'll be preaching this Sunday. And then Francis also preaches every week. And so we have some thoughts in, in our mind that aren't mm -hmm. ready yet. Like yeah. they're not ready to be presented. And so what we do here is we kind of talk a little bit about what's been on our hearts, what's been on our minds. Yeah. And um, I want to ask you just some thoughts on this because I've been thinking okay. about this. I think I'm going to preach on this this Sunday. Okay, let's go. Um, classic story of Peter walking on the water. Yes. Right? So. Yes storm everybody freaks out mm -hmm. they see this person who thought it was a ghost everyone flips out <laughs> yeah. right and so jesus is on the water you mm -hmm. know and they weren't sure what it was and so um 
you know, Jesus, I think Jesus says that it's me. I'm not sure if he says that or not. I can't remember right now, but, but somehow they think it might be him. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, Peter has this interaction with Jesus. Uh, Peter says, you know, if it's actually you tell me to, to walk on the water right, yeah. and he says, come. Yeah. And then Peter takes a step, you yeah. know, we know that we know the whole story. He walks and then he gets freaked out because of the wind <laughs> yeah. and he starts to sink. And right. right before he's, he's about to be dunked completely. He has enough time to say something to the effect of Jesus save me. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. And it says, Jesus immediately reached down his hand yeah. and, and saved him. And then he says, you know, right. why did you doubt? Mm -hmm. Basically that's mm -hmm. the story. Yeah. You know? So here's the thing. Yeah. What's let's, let's hear the thought. classically, <laughs> classically, this is what has been preached as far as I've heard it, at least. Yeah. So that scripture is all about lack of faith. Mm -hmm. It's all about Peter messed up. He should have never taken his eyes off of Jesus. Right, right. Always look to Jesus. So basically the premise is you keep your eyes on Jesus for your whole life. Yeah. And you're going to be good. Right. But the moment you take your eyes off of Jesus, you're going to sink. Right, right. Right. So that's been emphasized over time. And I understand that there's an angle to that story that is very clearly about faith because Jesus is talking about the whole idea of, you know, why did you doubt? Right. But there's another angle to it that has to do um, with the whole idea. See, here's what I've been thinking about. So it just doesn't work that way. Yeah. Because I don't, right. I don't know about you, but I don't always have my eyes on Jesus. True. I mess up. I want my own thing. Right. I'm sinning. I'm having bad thoughts. Right. I'm, I'm a sinful person. And so there's the angle of if, so there's the premise is if you take your eyes off of Jesus, you're going to sink. Mm -hmm. Right. But I think that the story is really about the fact that when we do mess up, cause we will. Yeah. Jesus is, is still there for, I think that's, need, that's what needs to be emphasized more. Don't you think? I think so. And I think too, to that regard, like, I would see. I would even say, even when you keep your eyes on Jesus, mm. you you're still gonna sink. Correct. He's still gonna let you sink, dude. That's so good. Yes. You know, mm -hmm. I think. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't. It almost. I know because I've pre I've preached it that way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I have I have waves tattooed on my leg. For you, those of you who don't know, I have waves tattooed on my leg because that story moved me when I was like an early Christian. When Interesting. I, when, when I first became a Christian. See, I didn't know that yeah. about you. Oh, really? I mean, I knew about the tattoos, yeah, but I didn't yeah. know about that specific one. Oh, yeah, yeah. It was from that. It's from that story. Um, but yeah, so like, I think that like when I've preached it in the mm. past, it's almost like this, it's almost, almost works righteousness almost. Right, like, right, 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 right. Uh, keep your eyes on, on Christ and, mm. and everything will be fine in premise. Yes. Yeah. Of course. Yes. But what about, what about the times that, that we still fall? We mm -hmm. still, we still fumble even, or the hard times that God allows us to go through, yeah. even when our eyes are on them. Yeah. You yeah. know? That's so, that's so important because, because the gospel, we have to understand what the gospel is mm -hmm. and we have to understand what the gospel is not. Yeah. The gospel is not do good, be good, you know, uh, do the best you can try harder. It's not that. Yeah. It's not that. So it's not about doing as much as you can to, to save yourself. Right. And, but it's also not about, uh, the times that you mess up mm -hmm. because both of those, whether it's about being as good as you can or, you know, beating yourself up because you messed up. Mm -hmm. Both of those are man centered. Are about so you. it's still about me. Yeah. Right. It's still right. about me. Yeah. Um, but it's never about what we do or, or don't do. It's always about what Jesus did on what the cross Jesus for us. Done. Yeah. So that I've heard my whole life, but mm -hmm. it never gets old. Yeah. It never gets that, old. The truth, the real gospel never gets old. It doesn't. Yeah. You know, right. It just doesn't. And I feel like we, it, we have to be reminded of that over and over mm -hmm. and over again. Another thing that I don't think we talk about enough and this is going to be weird because maybe, maybe for some people it'll be weird, but just the, the whole idea of how much God hates sin. Mm. Like he hates it yeah. so much. He despises it. Yeah. yeah. Right. You know, right. I, cause I think that, that, the contrast is important. Like, mm -hmm. um, I drive a 2010, uh, Toyota Corolla. Nice. It's, uh, I love that car. I love that car. It's a great car. Pe people laugh because it's like, it's not a new car. It's an <laughs> old car. Yeah. But the thing is, I have always driven old cars my whole life. Mm -hmm. um, no, well, not my whole life. I, I've, I've dr most of the time driven old cars. I want, bought one new car in my whole life. That was when uh, I was married for like, f after five years, we, we got a new car. But I've always driven old cars. And when I was in college, I had this, this terrible car. I had to hold up the seat with a, with, with the, 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 a broomstick. Nice. It was just like the worst <laughs> car you could ever imagine. Yeah. So, and I grew up in a third world country. Mm -hmm. So... 
I always say my definition of a nice car is a car that starts on the first try. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> and so I promise you yeah. that every time that I start my car, I get this feeling like, oh man, this is so nice. Right. Because yeah. it works, and the and it's and there's nothing wrong with the motor. It's an old. It's a relatively old car, but it's a nice car. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But some people don't don't feel that way. They'll they'll look at my car or they'll feel like, oh, that's kind of an old junky car. Um, because they've always had nice cars. Mm-hmm. I don't know where I'm going with this, but I think that the whole idea is that sometimes we need to, okay, the reason why I'm grateful for my car is because mm-hmm. of the contrast. Yeah. Because I know. Because you've seen. I've seen the uh-huh. crappy cars yeah. my yeah. whole life, and right. I know what I have. Yeah. You know? So I think the same thing can happen with the gospel. That's why mm. I think it's so important for us to understand the 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 how much God hates sin. Yeah. Because we need to understand the contrast between how much God hates sin so it gives us it gives us a better understanding of the extent that God went to to save us. Yes. Because if we only have this part, like we only have the good and the grace and all that kind of stuff, like okay, yeah. but we don't really value it. We, yeah. We'll actually value it when we understand how much God hates sin. Right. Does that make sense? Yes, hundred percent. So that contrast is important. It's just like we always say Jesus saves, but we have to say that that's not the full sentence. The full sentence is Jesus saves from. Yeah. What did he save you from? What right. did he save me from? Right. And when right. we can identify that he saved me from sexual immorality, saved me from addiction, mm-hmm. he saved me from X, Y, and Z. Yeah. You know, then we'll be so grateful for this new life in Christ right. that we have. I'm a, my, my professor in college used to say it this way. Shout out Dr. Madsen. Dr. Madsen. <laughs> from Hope International University, okay. actually. Um, he used to say... Um, Jesus isn't that good if you're not that bad. Oh, right. He would right, always right. say that because if our sin is not actually wicked and evil and brings death, yeah, then why why believe in Jesus? Yeah, there's no, really no point. Right, right. You know, <clears throat> other than like butterflies in your stomach. Perf- like, exactly. You know. Exactly. But, but when you know what what you've been saved from, mm-hmm. and if you're watching, maybe write it right down in the comments. Like, yeah. praise God, He saved me from. You don't have to say your sins, what but it was, yeah. praise God, He saved me mm-hmm. from my past, from yeah. whatever it was. You know. Yeah. So I think when we have to say Jesus saves, yes, but Jesus saves from from. Yeah, X, y, and Z. I think we miss we miss the power of the gospel mm-hmm. when we only get one side. So yeah. Jesus comes, right? John chapter one, full of grace and truth. So there's truth and there's grace. Here's the thing: I love the story of the woman caught in adultery, mm. and one of the things I love about that story is how it ends. Mm-hmm. So by Mosaic law, she was to be stoned to death. Right. Yeah. We don't know what the dude was, by the way. Nobody ever knows what the guy was. They mm-hmm. just show. She just they just bring her before Jesus, and you know, to be able to have sexual intercourse, you know. If you know anything about biology, it takes two people, right? <laughs> Where's the dude? Nobody knows where the dude is. Right. They just show up with this with this woman um, that was caught in the act of adultery. And so mm-hmm. anyway, I love the end of it because, you know, he who's free from sin throw the first stone. And then they start leaving. It's interesting, yeah. the detail, that it was the older, the old ones first and then the youngest. Mm. And then Jesus was writing on the ground. Yeah. And we don't know what he was writing. Right. There's theories about he was writing people's sins or mm. he was writing. We don't know what it was. Right. Or maybe he was ashamed because it's possible that she was naked. And so maybe he was just looking to the ground because he didn't want to you right. know, see her nakedness. Yeah. Right. There's theories about that, but I love the end of the story because at the end Jesus says, "So where are those who conde- where are those who who condemn you? He's like, right. They're gone." And then he says two things. He says he says, "Neither do I condemn you," and he says, "Go and sin no more." Yeah. I think the order of those two is very important. Yeah. Right. Right. Because he doesn't he doesn't talk about the sin first. Yeah. He talks about the no condemnation first. Right. So he says, "Neither do I condemn you." Right. Yeah. Go and sin no more. So there's mm. the two things. There's the there's the the invitation to a better life, yeah, right. But then there's a no condemnation, right. I think both of the, those things are very important, but I think the order is also important mm-hmm. because the scripture tells us that there's no condemnation for those who are in Jesus Christ, right. Which I love. I think that we make the mistake. So we have to talk about the anger of God against sin, but I think that we make a mistake when we flip the order, mm. when we make it about the sin. About the, yeah. No, no, it's the no condemnation. Right, exactly. Right? And then we're invited into a better life. Into a better not life. Not the other way around. Right. Right? To yes. where we're condemned first, and then we're, 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 we're living by guilt. Right. We're supposed yeah. to not live by guilt. We're supposed to live by gratitude. Yeah. Right? That's good. So That's good. I th- th- go okay. ahead. Okay, so I was going to ask you, I was going to ask you, so, unless you have something else. No, go ahead. Are you sure? Yeah. Okay. I feel like it could, it could mix in. Okay. Anyway. Cause I'm thinking about how does that translate into 
because I don't like talking about other churches because mm -hmm. I, I mean, if it's something positive, I love talking about other churches, but if it's something negative, I don't Yeah. because we all do things the best that we can. Right. And that's at least I like to start with that premise. Yeah. But I think that there's a danger in falling into a preaching of the gospel that is very comfortable. I, I asked you that a yeah. couple of weeks. I think I asked you or did I ask Tony? Mm -hmm. Shout out to Tony. Shout out our worship leader, Tony. Worship leader, Tony. <laughs> I was asking him, I think, um, if he thought that it was important. Oh, no. And then I brought it up in the podcast. Mm -hmm. If people should feel a little uncomfortable when they hear a message. Mm. Yeah. Because yeah. I think that it's easy to fall into <sighs> preaching what people want to hear. Yeah. I'm right. tempted. I'm tempted to do that every week. Yeah. So what are your, th what are your thoughts on that as far yeah. as how do we not fall into a guilt driven message, mm -hmm. uh, but also make very clear what God hates? Yeah. I think number one is, is just to use the word, mm -hmm. <laughs> use the word faithfully, study yeah. the word faithfully. Um, and the thing it'll preach itself, it, it will. you know, it'll mm -hmm. preach it. The word, the word of God stands alone. Yeah. It, it can stand alone. Yeah. It doesn't need us. We can literally just go up there and read it and mm -hmm. that'll be good. But, mm -hmm. um, we've been, God's given us these gifts of teaching and preaching. So yeah. let's use them. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. Uh, I think this is, and see, I knew it was going to fit in. Mm -hmm. This is, this is what I was going to say was, um, I mean, I, I've been a Christian for seven years now, roughly, you know, uh, maybe eight, seven, something like that. And so I'm still fairly new to all the, and I, as you, as you know, and as you may know, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty young, so I'm still kind of new to the whole church scene. Mm -hmm. I wasn't raised in church. Um, but I, I feel like from the past, a lot of the preaching, cause I've seen old preachers mm -hmm. too, like a lot of the preaching was that kind of guilt, yeah. that kind of, yeah. that kind of fire and brimstone yeah, that a yeah. lot of people speak of, mm -hmm. right? Um, but now, like you said, it's a lot of Jesus loves you, which he does. Don't yeah. get me, if you're hearing me, he does mm -hmm. love you, but he also wants to change you. Yeah. He loves you right where you, I think that maybe this is it. Um, uh, I'll finish my statement later, but I think this is, this is my answer to your question uh -huh. in a nutshell is that Jesus, we need to preach that Jesus loves you right where we're at, where you're at, but yeah. he loves you too much to leave you that way. Right, 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 right. right. So if we don't preach the, the full gospel, which is, which is, you know, Jesus died for sinners mm -hmm. um, and he saved them. And, but now he calls us sinners who have been saved into repentance without the part of repentance. It's not the, it's not the full thing, right? A repentant heart. I mean, a, a, re a saved person has a repentant heart, right? Right. Right. There's right, no, right. A sa I will go so far to say, if you are a saved person and you don't have a repentant heart, maybe reconsider what it is that you actually believe in. I'm just being, I'm just being, That's and I have good. to, I have it's to say that to myself. Always, too. always. Yes. Because if we truly believe that Jesus died for our sins, mm -hmm. we're not going to want to do those things anymore. Yeah. At least we'll try our best to not, we're going to, we're going to backslide. We will. I have, Yeah. we all have yeah, backslid yeah. into sin, but a truly, I would say a, a real, See, it's, it's tough to, to use that language, but like a follower of Christ that wants to be genuine yeah. has conviction and that conviction comes from the spirit. That's the evidence, right? Yeah. yeah. And anyways, yeah. I think it just, we need to find that balance of new age preaching, which is like love and grace and grace and grace mm -hmm. and only grace and no, no condemnation, no sin, mm -hmm. no talk about sin or hell. Right. We need to balance that with the old ways of fire and brimstone mm -hmm. and meet right there. Kind of like what you just said. Je yeah. Jesus Christ came full of grace and truth right grace there in John grace one and truth. Yeah. So, I mean, it's, I think too, I think we said this before in the first podcast mm -hmm. of, I don't, I, I don't think it's good if everyone knows everything by the end of your message. Right. I think there should be some questions. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Yeah. 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 You shared a story I think, about that. Yeah. yeah I remember yeah. that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Yeah, one of the things I was I was hearing this uh, speaker uh, talk the other day. It's the the founder of the Bible Project. I can't remember his name right now, mm -hmm. but he said something that was really interesting. And he said that he said this phrase. He said the the Bible refuses to be tamed. Mm. I love that because yeah. I think God as well, in the sense that you can't. There's this balance between grace and truth, mm -hmm. right? There's this balance in the sense that. Uh, reminds me of something that a, that a pastor once told me. He said, you know what your job is? Your job is to comfort the afflicted and afflict the comforted. Yeah, yeah. So it's this sort of dance that has to do with, well, when you think you understand the grace of God mm -hmm. and you understand his mercy and his forgiveness, okay, but 
check check the other part also yeah, yeah. of how much he hates sin. Right. But then when you feel like you're like feeling a little condemned, well, remember the grace. Remember, yeah. You know, so it's this dance that we always, and I feel like preaching is kind of that too. Mm-hmm. You know, it's you're flicking it. Like if you're too comforted, like you need to understand what you've been saved from. Yeah. Like, like your sin caused Jesus to die on the cross. Yeah. But then when you're falling on the guilt side, it's like, but wait, 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 there's the grace. There's the grace. So don't worry. Yeah. So there's this beautiful thing, you know, that mm-hmm. we walk in and that as a result of that, because here's the thing that's important. Um, one of the things that I think is the problem that happens when there's the preaching of the fire and brimstone is that it is guilt driven. Yeah. So right. you do things guilt driven. So you become religious. You become a Pharisee. Yeah. Right. So you try to do good because you think that that's an end. You know, uh, what mm-hmm. is the word? Like end all. End all be all. End all be all. Yeah, right. You yeah. think that's the main thing. It's like right. it's about my be- my behaving, my uh, modifying my behavior. Mm. Right. So one of the things I like to talk about and I'm rambling, rambling a little bit is that I never want people to walk away from a message thinking, oh, OK, now I got to do this. Yeah. No, never, right. never, never. Like right. if I if they walk away feeling a heavier weight than what, what they walked in with. Mm hmm. I have not done my job, mm. right? Because right. because Jesus says, "Put your uh, my yoke on you and learn from me, for I right. am uh, gentle and humble in heart, and yeah. you will find what rest, rest. for your soul." So mm-hmm. the result of that is rest. So right. I want people to find rest. Rest meaning, um, yes, the sin, yes, all that, but the grace has mm-hmm. to be because that's why Jesus says first to the woman caught in adultery, you know, um, neither do I condemn you. So there's no right. condemnation, right. but there's an invitation to a better life. Yeah. There's a better way. The grace almost fuels your desire. Yeah. To that's a good way, way to put it. Because like, uh, one thing I always like to say is we don't, we don't do good things for salvation. We mm. do them from salvation. Oh, that's, yes. Right. Like yes, God, yes, Jesus yes, yes, has yes. given us this, this great life, um, obviously eternal life, mm. But eternal life starts now. Yeah. Because if, I mean, there's no end. To, there, there is a physical life, but eternal life starts now and, until forever. Yeah. So he's given us this gift. Yeah. And because we've been given this gift that we don't deserve, by the way, mm. um, that's what is like the gas that fuels us to yeah. do good things. Yeah. And it's not it's not do good things so that we obtain. And I right. think that's where we where people get turned off from mm-hmm. church and, mm-hmm. and from. I mean, that, that's where I used to get turned off from church and, and from the word and from God is mm-hmm. I thought, I'm not even, there's no way I'm going to be perfect. Right. So why even try? Right, right. But that's the whole point mm-hmm. is that John 19, 30 says it is finished. Right. It's already been done. Yeah. So because it's been done, now we have the, we've got the gas in our car yeah. to go do the right things in the right place. What does Philippians say? It's like, he has laid out every good work yeah, for us to walk yeah, in, you know, yeah, beforehand for yeah, us to walk beforehand, in. Yeah. Yeah. It's interesting that whole idea. It's so, it's so good about the sins and about Jesus forgiving our sins and him saying it is finished. The sins of before the present and the future. Yeah. That's a, that's a really good topic. I feel like it, we could talk about this forever yeah. because it like, it never right. ends. Like the grace of God. Um, there's this song that talks about, about, um, grace. Is it grace? Grace being like a, like a hurricane. Mm-mm. Yeah, yeah. It just devastates everything. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's so crazy. Um, it's like you can't control it. You can't tame it. Right. You know, it overcomes everything, you know. Yeah, yeah, that's really good. So going into 2021, you know, and thinking about these things, mm-hmm. um, what have, do you have any resolutions or have you, th- <sighs> have you? Oh, we're, we're turning the car. Okay. Uh, resolutions. I'm definitely one of my biggest ones is, um, and although all the, also like, I want everybody to know, and I want you to know and myself to know really, um, that just cause it's a new year doesn't mean something magical happens. That's right. It's a great sign for, um, you know, a new start. Yeah. It's, it's a good motivator, but nothing is worse than when I, <laughs> I'm, I'm talking to myself here and you, if you know, you know, you've done this, uh, and, not just you, but like you, mm-hmm, <laughs> mm-hmm. Our, our listeners, um, when you say, yeah, this is going to be my year. Uh. I'm going to the gym every <laughs> single day. Well, I'm not eating those, those French fries anymore. Right. And then after January, it's a wrap. Yeah. I'm just giving up and going back to the old ways. Yeah. Um, so I think it's a, we need to not be, I, I, I'm like not the biggest guy in New Year's resolutions mm-hmm. because of that. But I like, I like the concept of a brand new beginning. Yeah. That being said. Definitely want to read way more this year. Mm. Like I've, I've read like every year. Cause I, I, I hate reading. I, 
I used to hate reading. Mm-hmm. Like when I was in high school, I, when I would do the, and from, if there's high schoolers listening, I, this is, don't do this when you, when you're in <laughs> English. Okay. When you're English class, don't do this. But I used to just for my papers and stuff and my tests, I would always just look at this thing called sparknotes.com. Okay. And it just gave the overview of the book because oh. I wanted to do the, the minimal yeah. as little as I could yeah, yeah, yeah. to just so I could get by. Mm-hmm. But now I truly enjoy reading. Yeah. So I want to read like one book a month. That's great. This year. That's a great so goal. One book a month. Yeah. Um, I've never read that much in my life. Mm-hmm. Uh, one book a month while also reading the entire Bible. Yeah. So we'll see how that goes. Another thing I want to do is I want to work out more. I'm so now this is coming out into the world. Oh man, here we go. I might just eat my words and do the whole January. Do it, man. Do you it. You know, but you know, we're doing this. Uh, here's a plug for but our there's church. Pi- power and commitment. Yes, you know, when you right. make a there, commitment public, yes, it's like okay, there is power in that. Here's the plug for our church as well. We got a 21 day fast, yeah, um, which started on January 1st. If you'd like to join us, join mm-hmm. us at any point. We're really doing this. Um, clean eating and yeah. um, it's January fifth, by the way. Yeah, no, yeah. no, I'm saying we're starting January. Yeah, you we know, started January. In case, 1st. Like if you're watching, like, oh you'll yeah, know yeah, this is where we're at. Mm-hmm. We're on January five now, so you can jump in whenever you want. Um, but we're 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 encouraging each other. We're fasting together. Mm-hmm. I'm I'm not just doing the Daniel fast. I'm like I'm going I'm going vegan for a whole year. A whole year. I'm gonna try. Okay. <laughs> and this is where I'm gonna get criticism and pushback because I'm eating. <laughs> this is gonna sound terrible, but I'm eating in and out like once a month. <laughs> okay, so that's your only. So that's like, my only thing. Is I sense. I cannot give up in and out. As long as yeah. I live in California, I I need in and out. I, I think love it's good because it has to be sustainable. Yes, that's the thing. That's right. the thing I try to talk about whenever yes. I'm making a decision or resolution or we're starting something new at the church. Mm-hmm. One of the questions I always ask: Okay, that's great, but is this sustainable? But is it sustainable? So I think if yeah. you add that to it, yeah, it makes it doable. Because I'm not, I'm not going cold turkey vegan. Right. So, right, but right. it's because I've been eating pretty much 80 percent vegan. Yeah. For the past. I don't know, two months now. Yeah, I've and, noticed that. And yeah. I feel so good. So what, what things have you noticed that have improved? Man, I was, me and Tony were talking about this right uh-huh. now. I have like so much more energy, so much more energy to just like, just go through my day. Let me ask you this though. Is it because, because you're eating differently or is it because you're taking out the foods? Is it specifically because yeah. it's a vegan diet or is mm-hmm. it because of all the things that you're not consuming? Uh, no, because I'm still eating cookies. Well, not on this fast. I'm not eating cookies. Right, right, right. But um, yeah, like I'm still eating cookies yeah. and ice cream. Okay. But like the thing is my cookies and ice cream are non-dairy, non, non-gluten okay. and stuff like that. Okay. So um, that's just naturally become – because remember I told you I did this 40-day fast yeah. like in October? That was insane. Yeah. So like – With a group of your friends. Yeah, yeah. How many of you? There was like 12 of us that did it. Yeah, it was. That it was, was rough, man. Pretty much I mean, it was no dairy, no gluten, no refined sugars. Mm-hmm. And I was still eating meat at that time. So I pretty much adopted that mm-hmm. for my like daily intake. Yeah. Like I don't really eat bread anymore unless it's from In-N-Out. So I've noticed a difference between what you're doing now and the fast that you did before. Mm-hmm. I think that 40-day fast drained you guys' energy. Yeah. I oh, feel yeah. like this fast, it's done the exact opposite. Yes. Hundred percent, and this yeah. is not in my mindset. It's not a fast. Like this is gonna be my life. Right, right. You so know? it's a different type of it's diet. A different, that you're, yeah. That's so. interesting. So what about cognitively? Have you noticed anything different cognitively? Oh my, yeah. I love that you asked me that mm-hmm. question because mm-hmm. I just thought of this. Was that um, I've my thoughts have been so clear lately. Interesting. And my 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 ways of communication, mm-hmm. I like it's just been clearer than I feel like ever. It yeah. seems crystal clear. Yeah. Like. Yeah. I'm able to get across my points. I'm able to to think about what it is that mm-hmm. I want to accomplish. Like, but before yeah. it's almost like I was foggy, and there's probably like a couple other things that contributed to the the fogginess mm-hmm. in my diet. Yeah. But being mostly vegan in the in these past couple months, like, man, my it's it's done really good that's for good. for my my body, my mind, and that's interesting. You know. That's good, man. Do you take any supplements? Um, I take vitamins. Vitamins. Like, yeah, and I drink yeah. like I drink orange juice like every day. So that's good. Mm-hmm. That's good. Keep yeah. it. Yeah. For me, this fast, so I, it's a fast that I've personally done every year, 21 day fast yeah. at the beginning of the year. So I basically invited the whole church to do it with us, which we have 61 people doing it. Let's in go. Our church. Isn't that cool? That's awesome. Because last year I did it and it was more like, hey, if you want to join. So it was just yeah. a couple of people. Yeah. But this, this is, um, this is a good number. That's it's a good awesome. number for That's us. a good amount. Yeah. It's a good Sweet. amount. And so I'm staying in contact with everybody and stuff like that. But anyway, what I wanted to share was that 
um, I, f- I feel the same way. Mm-hmm. Like, I, like I feel immediately like I'm more connected, like I'm yeah. listening better. I have better focus. Um, I think that has to do with, cause I don't eat meat. Really? Yeah. You don't I'm, eat meat? No, no, no. I'm saying in the, da- in the fast. Oh, in the fast. I'm not eating yes, meat. Yes, yes. Yeah. Um, and, um, and nothing like no pasta, no rice. Yeah. Just basically, wow. you know, salad yeah. and eggs and, you know, uh, fruits and vegetables and that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah. And so I think my energy might be a little bit lower, mm-hmm. but I feel like my cognitively I'm more, you know, le- like less foggy. Wow. I think clearer. You know, yeah, I don't know, but I take a bunch of supplements too as well. Mm, so. Right, right. What is your uh, so what I was trying to connect it back, but I was like, I don't think I can connect it back. Let's just let's just go on to this. What is your what is your take on like on fasting? Like, why do we, why do we fast? Mm. What's like the biggest reason that we fast? So it's interesting that the Bible doesn't really talk much about fasting. It mm-hmm. doesn't talk about how to fast. It doesn't talk about what to eat. When it doesn't, you'll yeah. never find that in scripture. Uh, you, if you go back into the rabbinic culture though, you find a lot more mm. detail about it. And so when Jesus talks about fasting, it's really more of when you fast, yeah. right? When you fast, don't be like the Pharisees who mm-hmm. disfigure their faces and want everybody to know. Yeah. You know? Um, in my experience with fasting, um, it's just, it's, it's a couple of things happen. One is I remember the poor because mm. you know, you're not, you're, you're, you're um, depriving yourself of something that you right. that is so common. So you, yeah. re- you remember the poor and at the same time um, you emphasize the time that you were spent, which is not really that much time because cooking is not a big deal, mm-hmm. but you take something out of your, out of your diet and you take that, that, sort of that time frame when you're eating differently to connect with God. So it's like yeah. a reminder basically, right, right. you know, um, and it's always been good. There's always a, a theme. So I'm, th- I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about faith mm-hmm. is the big, is really my, my big theme. Yeah. It's the theme for the church, but it's right. also my pers- my personal theme too, because we're yeah. only going to be collectively what we are individually. individually. Mm-hmm. Um, and so faith. So we talk about faith and faith is such a crazy one. I love because in, in the New Testament, I've, I've read through the four Gospels a few times last year, and I just started highlighting whenever Jesus would attribute direct relationship to what he would do to the faith of the person. Yeah. Now, Jesus performed miracles all the time, right. but there's like 26 or 27 moments where specifically he attributes what he did, the mm-hmm. miracle that he did, or the miracle that he couldn't do. In the case of when he was going back to his hometown and he couldn't perform many miracles because mm-hmm. of their lack of faith. Mm. So just about 26 or 27 events like that to where he attributes his action or his lack of action yeah. with the faith or lack of faith of the person. Yeah, And so we can't control what God can do. I can control, not really control, but I can put in all my faith into the things that I yeah. do. So what I like sort of my resolution for 2021 is if I'm going to pray for something, I'm going to pray with all my heart. Right. Like I'm going to pray. Right. Like if I'm praying for healing, I'm praying for that person to be healed mm. in the moment. Yeah. That's what I want God to right. do. Like exactly. I can't control what he does, but I can control. I don't know if I can, I, I don't even know if the phrasing is correct in this, yeah. but I can just put all my faith into like, I yeah. can picture it. And I can see God doing it and I'm praying for it and I'm right. believing for it. That's what I'm, what I'm working on. Yeah. And I don't want to back down on that mm-hmm. kind of stuff. One thing that me and my friend, um, Andrew have been, have been talking, we have a, a lot of good talks all the time. Shout out Andrew. If you're watching, Andrew, um, uh, is like, you know, society. And I get the premise mm. of what this saying in our society is, is don't put all your eggs in one basket. Yeah. Right. I get the premise, you know, don't, 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 settle on something mm-hmm. when you know there's so much more i get i understand the premise yeah but i think if we believe that god is good and he, he is he has given us abundant life and he is as much as he is um you know a wrathful god in certain moments mm-hmm. he is a god who loves us yeah. and wants to bless his children yeah um i'm not about to talk prosperity gospel mm-hmm. don't worry <laughs> um one thing we always like to say me and andrew is if you're doing something or if you're thinking about something, if you're praying about something, put all of your eggs in the basket. Yeah. Because the, 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 like, well, like I said, society will be like, Oh, don't, you, don't put all your eggs in one basket. I understand the premise, mm-hmm. but I want to push back a little and say, yeah. no, I'm putting all my eggs in, in one basket yeah. because God's going to give me more. Yeah. He can give me more eggs to put. Yeah. You know? So like if, if, like you said, if somebody has a, has something they need to be healed of, I'm going to put all of my mm-hmm. faith eggs yes. in that basket. Yeah. I'm going to, or, or like mm. if somebody needs, 
needs like a financial miracle. Yeah. I'm going to put all my eggs in that basket. I'll mm-hmm. do what I can or somebody else will do what they can. Yeah. And I'll, but I'll put all my eggs in that basket to, to see if what God, what God will do. Yeah. Maybe you'll hatch them. Yeah. Maybe they'll just go to waste. Yeah. But I'm always going to have, as a believer, we're mm-hmm. always going to have more eggs yeah. in our basket. He's always going to give us more. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. I yeah. agree. It's, it's not, he's not limited on the amount of, you know, blessing that he can give right. the amount of, whatever he's going to do. I love what you said, you know, um, one of the things I love about Jesus, um, as it relates to us putting all our eggs in one basket is that I feel like he did that all the time. Yeah. Like he would, when he was with someone, I call it being fully present. Yes. He wasn't half heartedly yeah. with people. I think that's, that's more of what I'm trying to say. 100%, right. Yeah. I, I think that that's something that, that I want to bring into 2012, 2012, <laughs> 2021 as well. Oh man. Nine like, just years flip ago. the numbers. Yeah. Um, is that if I'm with you, I want to be fully with you. Yeah. If I'm with my wife, I want to be fully with my wife. If I'm right. doing a counseling session. I want to be like fully engaged in what I'm doing, not right. a divided heart, just mm-hmm. 100% there. Right. And so that, that I think is helpful. Um, so I was listening to this Matthew McConaughey. Matthew, oh, he's okay. an, an actor, right? He's yeah. The an actor. actor. Okay. I heard an interview once and he mm-hmm. said something that's really stuck with me. He was, okay. ta- he was talking about meditation though. So Whatever. Opinions on meditation, whatever it is. I don't know. I'm not saying I'm for it or against it. I'm saying this is what he was talking about. He was talking about meditation. He said that meditation helped him do something. He said that he saw all his tasks like this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So he saw all of his tasks tasks vertically, right? When he would meditate, what would happen is that his tasks would go this way. And so he would only see the one that was right in front of him. Mm. I love that image. In the sense that I feel like wow. this is something that we could learn from Jesus. Yeah. Because Jesus, his his tasks were innumerable, right? <laughs> yeah. But I feel like he was only focusing on what he had right in front of him. Right. I think that if we take that into our lives, um, it's very helpful. Mm-hmm. As Christians, yeah, yeah. when we're with people, especially what we do as, you know, talking to people, counseling, praying, yeah. all that stuff. Yeah. But don't you think that there's... Sh- there should be like a, cause I think everything that Jesus did pointed to the cross. Mm-hmm. So could you, would you say that that's like, so he has this list of things to do. Oh, I got to heal Jim. I got to heal uh, <laughs> Rachel. I got to heal. Or I'm just naming random. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're not even in the Bible, but <laughs> like, so he has all that list, right? Cause now they're, they're like this, the mm-hmm. list is like this. It's toppled over and okay. Healing of the blind man is now right here, but, can we, in our context, how should we have like that certain thing on the side? Like the, the biggest reason is the cross for Jesus. Oh, yeah, so I'm, yeah, I'm yeah. healing this. I'm healing the blind man to yeah. show my glory because I'm on my way to the cross. Yeah. Um, and then he heals, you know, when Peter gets his ear chopped off Yeah. or, or chop, Peter chop- chops off a ear. Yeah. Jesus is like, whoa, whoa, hold, don't, don't do that no. because I don't, I need to get arrested so yeah. I can go to the cross like that. So then he heals the guy's ear. Mm. His main thing is always the cross. Yeah. Do you think that like, cause that could almost look like multitasking, mm. you know, I'm mm. trying to, but he has like, but it's not multitasking. It's a big thing. Yeah. Do you think we should have like that big theme oh, in, yeah. in our life? Right. Yeah. Cause we have a list of things to do, but mm-hmm. there should always be the, the yeah. bigger thing behind it. Yeah. I would say we, we've talked about the why, the big why behind yes. what we do. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So whatever it is that we do. Mm-hmm. Um, so when I talk about this toppling over, I'm talking about mainly like the, I don't want to call it counseling a task but it's a thing that you right. do and then the next thing that you do gotcha it's basically so you're not overwhelmed with everything with every oh, okay but everything that you do has mm-hmm. the why which is to bring glory to god okay right so gotcha. yeah I, I agree with that okay I agree i'm just that. trying to push back to give some entertainment <laughs> just kidding <laughs> no but you're right yeah so yeah um good man good stuff yeah good stuff how long have we been going for um, has it been 30 minutes already it's a uh, 245 it's about been about 30 minutes about 30 minutes yeah yeah is there anything else you want to share? Um, anything on your mind? Anything on my mind? Um, well, just to encourage you, if you're fasting, yeah. Since we were talking about fasting, um, it it's gonna get hard. I've done I've done this 21 day fast mm-hmm. uh, the past four years mm-hmm. as well, and um, I would just say, don't fight anybody. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> don't because I, I I noticed during the fast, God will do some great things in your heart and yeah. your mind. But then there's gonna there's a point in the fast where it's like you get very irritable. Yeah. You just want to eat a cookie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, so don't fight anybody. But also, kind of what we're talking about, mm-hmm. the fasting is not just a task. It's 
it's the big there's a bigger reason of, absolutely I, I one of my friends um once told me i asked her about fasting and she was like um she was doing a fast and she was like it's not it's not the hardest thing for me i'm like really it's so hard for me <laughs> and she's like well i look at it it's because i look at it this way she she said i'm not fasting from food i'm feasting on the lord Oh, and I was like, so oh, spiritual. I was like, come so on, spiritual. giving me the image of like, of just Jesus with a plate <laughs> in front of her. Like, stop it good for you. <laughs> I know. <laughs> so I was like, good for you, girl, man. But, uh, but yeah, so just to encourage you, if you're, if you're fasting and if, yeah. even if you don't go to a church and you just stumbled upon the podcast like, yeah. and you want to join this fast with us, um, it's, it's going to be difficult, but yeah. you can do it. You can do it. God is with you. The spirit is with you. Yeah. So, so. January 1st to, to the 21st, if you want yeah. to join in right now, that's fine too. But just don't go hungry because that's not the, that's <laughs> yes, not the goal. That's not of the goal. It. Just eat good food. Right. Yeah. Eat good food. Drink a lot of water. You know, Fruits, eat vegetables. Yeah. But yeah. you don't have to be hungry. That's, that's right. not the goal. It's not to be hungry. You can have your stomach full, but just full of good food. Exactly. You know? So... Yeah. All right. Well, good stuff, man. Good stuff. Thanks, you guys, for joining us. Yeah, thank you guys so much. Um, yeah. I guess we'll call this one Matthew McConaughey fasting and <laughs> I don't know. I can't believe I brought up Matthew McConaughey. <laughs> but I just, I've never forgotten what he said. It's, it's been helpful for me to yeah, think about it. And it's good. not even uh, as a result of meditation because I don't meditate per se. Mm-hmm. But um, I do try to you know, focus on just the next thing and be fully yeah. present with whatever it is that I'm doing. Right. No, so, that's good. Yeah. That's good. All right, you guys. All right. Have a great week. Love you guys. See you next time. Later.